Hey YouTube, so if you've just followed on for the last video, we just took a look at where we booted up a Packer machine, but the machine wasn't quite ready for us to use in a lab, we still needed to actually run our scripts. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how to do it. Left hand side, I've got the commands ready, because we've now typed them in three times, I'm pretty sure you don't want to watch, watch me keep typing in commands. So let's take a look at this JSON file. So we've got the boot command, it's the same. But now we've got other strange things in here, like this guy over here, where we've got these user something, and again over there we've got a user something, and again over there we've got a user something. So what are those things? So Packer allows us to automate our building of our machines. And the way we do that is we give it a set of commands to run for each time it runs. Now, when I create a machine, I may want to make a small machine, but when I actually get my automated environment to create, I might want to make it a bigger machine. I might be debugging it, so I want it to compress really quickly, so I might give it a, a value of 1, but in my automated environment, I'm going to get a value of 9 because I've got lots of time there. So if we look at the bottom here, we've got this section here called variables. What we're doing over here is we're defining a set of variables that Packer will allow us to pass in at the time where we actually run the Packer command. Now there's two ways we can pass in variables. We can either pass in the variables via the command line in the form of hyphen var and then the variable name equals and then the variable value. Or we can define another JSON file that contains just the variables and it will take the form of something like what I've just highlighted now and then when we invoke the the pack command we'd invoke it with hyphen var hyphen file so you can see over here this is the template user variables and at the bottom you'll see over here how to pass in the stuff via the command line how to pass the stuff in via a file. And you can see there's the difference over there. Var equals variables dot JSON or var equals, sorry, var, and then just a string value for what you want the variable to equal. So in our JSON file, what we've done is we've defined some same default values. To be honest, these values are the values that I use every single time I build these machines. So I don't actually have any templated out variable files to use. Like I said, I just use these values and they work fine for me. So everywhere we make use of it, we have to put it in this format over here. And if anybody's ever written some Go and done some templating, this will look familiar. The double bracket, then a function and some value. And that's standard go practice and packer is also built with go so it would make sense that they've just used the template language over here so we also have now our provisioner this guy over here that i've just highlighted and we told packer that the provision is a type shell so what we're telling packer now is that we want you when you can to run all of these scripts in order and then at the end of it shut the machine down and do our post process so our scripts do things like updating the machine installing the virtual box components onto the machine creating our vagrant user setting up ssh installing our actual tools that we want and then cleaning up the machine we also do a minimize on the disk and by doing that we're actually just taking all of the empty space that's left over on the disk and we just fill it up with zeros and that allows us to get a very very good compression ratio which means that when we're done our ubuntu box with all of our tools installed is about 750 megs which is pretty good for a server that we're going to do on a lab now, I'm not going to show every single one of these scripts because, in all honesty, that's not really what we're here to do. If you want to take a look at all the scripts, you can go to my GitHub account, which will be in the description below, and you can check that out and have a go. You're more than welcome to use the scripts and keep them for yourself. So, 
if I'm just scroll nice and slowly over here, if anybody doesn't have the GitHub or doesn't know how to use GitHub, they can always just copy and paste it from the screen or copy and type it from the screen, should I say, and start building. So let's go take a look at what our scripts actually look at. So you can see I've got a bunch of common scripts over here and a bunch of Ubuntu based scripts over here. Now, they're really easy bash style scripts. So if you know any, any bash, you can do this. It's really, really easy. So here's one to install Go. Here's the minimize that we were talking about. And you can see all we're doing really is we're going to be using um, DD to fill up the disk with zeros over there. And after that, when we when Packet comes to compress our disk, it'll get a very, 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 very good compression ratio. We also want to make sure that when we create a machine, we want to get rid of any log files, any temp files that we hunt any bash history especially if we've typed any passwords in there we don't really want that stuff left over on the machine that other people could get a hold of so just go ahead flush all of that stuff out and get the machine nice and clean as if it was going to be a brand new machine so the vagrant script is quite an important one but when vagrant connects to the machine it uses a ssh key but it uses the same SSH key every single time it logs into the machine for the first time. Now that key is publicly available off of GitHub by the guy that built the very first Vagrant. So you can see there's the key over there. And what we do is we just go and fetch that key, add it into the authorized keys list, and then set the appropriate permissions on there. And that just means that when Vagrant comes to boot the machine up for the first time, and then SSH into our Linux box, it is then able to get into the machine and it will change the key to something more secure when it runs. If we build the machine, we will see that we will get the same thing again. We will have Packer bring the box up, start the install, type in all of the commands, and then the machine will finish its actual install. When the machine reboots, Pack will then log into the machine via SSH and then it will install all of the scripts or run all of the scripts that we've told it to run. Once it's done all of that, it's going to use this shutdown command over here. And that shutdown command basically says to Packer, when you're done with all the scripts, run this command in order to shut the machine down gracefully. If the shutdown command has nothing in it, then Packer will just force a shutdown on the machine. You don't really want that if you're going to be using this as a lab server. You want the machine to shut down gracefully so that when you boot it up the next time, you've got a good clean machine. You can see over here, we've also got the SSH username and password. Again, like I said, we've got the Vagrant user on here with a Vagrant password, and we've set the pseudo privileges for Vagrant to allow it to run installs with or run pseudo commands without actually having to type in a password so that makes our provisioning a lot easier and that's just the standard way of doing this Vagrant stuff. So I'm just going to let this run now and you'll see at the end of it we will have a machine that we can actually boot up and use in our lab. I'll then take take you through in the next video about how to make use of this in Vagrant. We'll use a very very simple Vagrant script just to get us going and you'll see that we'll actually boot the machine up and everything that we've told it to install which is going to be Go, Ruby and Docker will all be available to the machine without actually having to download it from the internet every single time we boot up the machine. Okay, so you can see our machine now is rebooted, it's finished its install, and now we've got a full install of Ubuntu on. At this point, Packer will actually recognize that the SSH service is now available, and then it will start doing our scripts via SSH, so you'll see on the left-hand side, Packer's already started.
Okay, and that's it. So now we have a machine that is available for us to use with Vagrant. And in the next video, we will scoop this machine up, fire it up in a very, very simple Vagrant script, and take a look and just show you that all of the tools are, are installed that we wanted. So see you in the next video.